Hey guys, it's Jeff and today iOS 13 beta 2 came out to all developers and this time we actually have a developer beta profile. So if you guys want to go ahead and install iOS 13 without that mumbo jumbo of going throughout the IPSW files and having to use iTunes, Mac OS and all that, uh, just head down to the link in the video description below. I will have an updated version on how you can install iOS 13 via that developer beta profile. Anyways guys, if you are super excited to see iOS iOS 13 beta 2, drop a like on the video and also get subscribed to not miss any content on the upcoming releases of iOS 13 betas. So anyways guys, we are on to iOS 13 beta 2. Let's go ahead, check out what's new in iOS 13 beta 2 and see what new features, major changes, or maybe even new bugs pop up in this beta version. This iOS 13 beta 2 update video is sponsored by CyberGhost VPN. And unlike other VPN services out there, CyberGhost does not spy on your internet usage or collect and sell your data. What they also do is provide you the fastest VPN servers possible each time you connect, but also have a really cool option where you can select from streaming servers dedicated to individual streaming services like Hulu, HBO, Amazon, Netflix, YouTube, you get the idea. So go check out CyberGhost VPN in the video description below. They can support your iPhone, Mac, PC, and Android devices all for just $2.75 per month. Okay guys, so we have iOS 13 beta 2 loaded up on the device on the right here. So just keep that in mind. I'm going to use the one on the left for uh, you know, recognizing any changes and how they actually compare to beta 2. So just keep that in mind. Beta 2 is on the left, beta 1, or beta 1 is on the left, beta 2 is on the right. So let's go ahead and get started. The actual update size for beta 2 uh, came in at around 681 megabytes. And obviously uh, there is a new way here to install. Uh, so if we go into general and then onto profile, you can see I do have an iOS 13 and iPadOS 13 beta profile installed onto my device here. With beta 1, we unfortunately didn't have that option. It was only the option to download via iTunes or macOS 10.15 or Xcode, uh, whatever the case may be. Now you have a developer beta profile. I think that's the biggest change here because a lot of you guys have been asking for this profile and here it is. So there will be a link in the video description below to a video on how to install iOS 13 using this profile, but that is the first point of order here, just showing you guys that change. Now let's go into general and then onto the about screen because there's a few things that actually have changed here. Uh, you can see the build number has obviously changed with beta two now we have 17A5508 and previously we had a different build number there. Now, if we go down all the way to the uh, modem firmware, you can see that we do have a big jump here to uh, modem firmware 1.51.07 now on beta two. So there is a slight change here with the modem firmware and that should improve call quality, cell connection and all of that. Now, if we go into the general menu here um, and then down to uh, kind of the uh, profile down here where we see profile VPN and everything like that, you can see I have the beta profile installed onto both devices here, but they're actually in different places. So the order of uh, this menu here at the bottom has in fact changed. Now let's go over to the Wi-Fi menu here and there is a few changes. Uh, as you can see on the left, we have personal hotspots and on here it says the same thing, but we have choose a network and now we have networks here on the right in beta two. So instead of choose a networks, it just shows networks that are available. And I think that's a very nice change there. Now let's go back and go ahead and check out some more changes. Uh, we do have a big one in the wallpapers. Um, so in the wallpapers menu, when you go to actually select a wallpaper, uh, the bottom at the bottom, uh, the button at the bottom actually works. So here on the left, you can see in beta one, it did not work. And here you can see it works. So this is actually just changing, um, you know, how it's scaled. Uh, so that actually works now. And once you actually go and set uh, the, the wallpaper, it doesn't crash anymore. I'll talk about that a little bit later when we talk about possible bugs in iOS 13 beta one versus iOS 13 beta two. Now, if we go all the way down to the camera menu here, you can see we have a pretty big change on the right here in beta two, you can see that we have a preferred language. So I can go ahead and select my language for the camera app, which is really cool. And uh, yeah, that's the only change there, but it is a pretty major one as we can now change the language of each individual app.
Now, if we go into uh, sort of the, the apps there forward, um, down at the bottom, you can see that we do have this added language here on the right-hand side in beta two in all of these menus. So just keep that in mind. Um, you can, in fact, go ahead and change the language for each specific app now in beta two. Uh, we weren't able to do that in beta one. That was a feature that Apple did say was possible but now you can see it actually um, here in beta two. Now let's quickly go all the way back up to the iCloud menu because we have a pretty major change here. Uh, on the bottom, you can see that with the iCloud menu, you have subscriptions to the App Store. So you can actually go in and check your subscriptions that you've made in the App Store and see what's active, what's not, and everything like that. So uh, you can go ahead, see what uh, subscriptions you have and edit them in this menu so you can take care of Apple Care, YouTube, um, you know, all the subscri subscriptions you may have, you can go ahead and do that straight from the iCloud menu. Now on the home menu, I'll just kind of show you uh, the 3D touch feature does in fact work uh, within iOS 13 beta two, works a lot better than in beta one. There was some customization you can do in beta one to kind of get it to work, um, but now in beta two, everything is solid with 3D touch, so that is really nice to see. Now if we go into the camera app here on both phones, you can see that in portrait mode, um, we only have stage light mono, which is what we had in iOS 12, and now we actually have high key mono, um, um, added on beta two of iOS 13. So that's really cool. This is a premier feature that Apple uh, kind of showed us within uh, their WWDC 2019 keynote, specifically with iOS 13. So now you have a um, kind of arrow here in the center and you can go ahead and uh, change exactly where center is uh, in portrait mode. On the left here, you can see that we don't have that option uh, within portrait mode. So in portrait mode, you can actually have these grid lines and see uh, what is in focus, what is in center um, with iOS 13 beta two. So another change that I did notice was something that I really was missing in iOS 13 beta one. And uh, now you can actually see the Beats Studio icon up there at the top. So as you can see, I have Beat Studio 3s. And uh, before it wasn't showing the icon, it was just showing a like random speaker. So now that actually works. And uh, yeah, that's a really welcome change to see. And on that note, uh, with the audio sharing feature now in beta two, it actually works. So audio sharing between like two sets of AirPods or two sets of Bluetooth connected devices now works within iOS 13 beta two. So go ahead, check that out if you have two devices um, that you can share audio with. Now let's go into the home icon here uh, with iOS beta one, iOS 13 beta one and iOS 13 beta two. Uh, you can see that we do have a change here. Um, the the kind of gradient of color um, on the left-hand side, it's a little bit more opaque and here we can see white. Um, so it looks like they did make a few changes here um, so that you can actually see things now and it's not just so, um, you know, so translucent that you can't really pick out what is going on there. Um, now, if we move on to the remote app, when we open the remote app, it says swipe to navigate here in beta two. So I'll just show that for you once more. So swipe to navigate and then that actually goes away once you go ahead and and uh, start using the app. So everything looks the same here. It's just that it does like kind of prompt you to swipe to navigate uh, when opening the app and on beta one, it did not do that. Now, one other change that I notice on the home screen here is actually um, the addition of this little icon here. So you can actually, if an app has a widget, you can go ahead and add a widget. So um, if I go to the Planny app here, add widget, and uh, that's really cool. On the left here, if I you know went ahead and did, did that, there's no add widget feature. Um, so that's really nice. You don't actually have to go to this very long list of apps here to go ahead and add your widgets. If it has a widget available, you can now do it directly from the home screen by just uh, 3D touching it and clicking on add widget. Now, when you go ahead and open up the Maps app, you have a brand new cover screen here. Just prompts you to look around and explore the uh, 3D imagery in San Francisco, Las Vegas, and Honolulu. Um, these are the places where they have um, 3D kind of look around features. So if you were in these places, you can go ahead and use that new feature. If you were not, unfortunately, um, that is not out yet. And then it also premieres this new feature called favorites and collections. And then you have series suggestions as well. So kind of check out all of these new features within iOS 13 if you were in these cities for look around and then favorites and collections is also something that we 
saw in beta one, but there's now a prompt for that in beta two. Now, when you open the home app, you actually have a brand new option here to see uh, and select. HomePod can now recognize multiple voices. So this is a feature that Apple did uh, feature within WWDC, and it's really nice to um, you know get this feature. So you can go ahead, set that up, and um, basically have multiple voices controlling your HomePod. Now, uh, the next menu that it shows is personal requests. So you can actually choose whether or not personal requests uh, you want to use those or not. That was a feature previously, um, but now there's a prompt for it here in beta two. Now the next one is add a profile to your Apple TV. So you can actually add different profiles to the Apple TV uh, from the home app. You don't actually go have to go into the Apple TV app. This allows you to uh, view different content. So like, let's say my content is loaded. Uh, another person can go ahead and load their content and the content will uh, kind of mess up each other's uh, rhythm. So I can have my own movies that I like watching my own genre and the other person can have their own genre and it will mix and match uh, when we're using the Apple TV. So that's really nice. And I'll go ahead and add that and kind of feature that um, later on as I mess with the Apple TV. Now, the last prompt that you get here is the HomePod update available this fall. And uh, yes, this is the HomePod update to iOS 13, and it just prompts you to say, hey, uh, this update will be available this fall. So guys, one other change that I did find was within the iMessage app, more specifically with the Memoji st stickers. You can also use Animoji stickers as well, um, but the Memoji stickers give you a little bit more customization here. Uh, so you can see that we have some new options here within the Memoji stickers, and I personally am really liking these. So go ahead, check them out within the iMessages app. So guys, those are basically all of the new features that we saw within uh, beta two of iOS 13 and some of the uh, new features that we saw. Uh, let's go ahead and check out performance here because performance was very surprising to me, at least in uh, beta one, simply because Apple was saying that we should be seeing a much faster uh, version of iOS uh, 13 here uh, versus iOS 12. And we didn't exactly see that, uh, but again, we are in the first couple of builds here, so I don't expect to see anything major happen with speed and performance just yet, just because we're getting a lot of new features and everything like that. So as you can see on the left here, we have beta one at 48.24 for a single core, and then on the right, 48.13 on beta two. On the multi-core in uh, beta one, 10,985, and then 11,087 here. And just to let you guys know, we are running the same exact device here, iPhone XS Max, um, you know, so the devices are exactly the same and the scores should be the same. Now, this is really interesting. We're getting a 21,739 on beta one and on beta two, 20,924. So that's very interesting to see, but you have to understand when you see this lower uh, kind of number with beta two, that is actually uh, kind of touting a lot more stability. So a lot of people were uh, basically thinking that iOS 13 was um, you know very unstable. And now when going throughout iOS 13, I noticed that things are a little bit more stable and a little bit more fluid. So if you go into uh, you know, 3D touch these menus, everything is very fluid and stable. And uh, a lot of the settings app and settings menu and everything like that, anything to do with Apple, any of the Apple apps that you may be using, everything seems a little bit more fluid. So on uh, you know, the topic of speed and performance, uh, specifically with iOS 13, as you saw, just a small jit jitter there. Um, but for the most part, iOS 13 beta two is a little bit more stable to, to me in my mind uh, than beta one, simply because Apple has had the time to kind of um, sure up all the UI bugs and everything like that uh, found within beta one. So beta two, a lot more stable here. And I think that um, is reflective of this score within Geekbench here. So the lower score doesn't exactly mean that we're getting lower performance value. Um, everything is just as fast as beta one, it's just everything seems to be a little bit more smooth here within beta to versus um, beta one. So guys, that was iOS 13 beta two. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below of what this update entailed to you. Like, did you find anything new that you really liked or was it kind of lackluster? Let me know in the comment section down below. I think for me, the overall stability of beta two is really exciting to see. Uh, we did see a very small update here, 691 megabytes. So I wasn't really expecting major new features, but seeing uh, the new portrait mode uh, feature involved with the uh, camera app and seeing the grid lines and the center, 
um, icon there with portrait mode. I think that's really cool um, because you always want to make sure that your, your photo is centered within the frame. And I think adding that to portrait mode was really nice. I think that the uh, kind of like subtle changes to the control center were really nice as well. But overall, speed and performance is very high, but stability is very high as well. So that's always nice to see within a beta and especially within beta 2. Now onto my recommendation of if you guys should actually be installing this onto your device because there's a new method of installing here with the uh, beta profile, link in the video description below again if you want to go ahead and uh, check that out. But yeah, guys, this is definitely the most stable build of iOS 13 um, of any iOS version that has released in beta uh, after WWDC that I've seen. iOS 12 was very unstable, iOS 11 the same, and iOS 13 here, even in beta one, was more stable than any of those builds up to about like beta four. So I am definitely excited to see what Apple is doing in the near future here with iOS 13 betas. But as far as waiting for a public beta and kind of holding off on the developer betas, there's not too much of a trade off here in beta 2 of iOS 13. Now I will be giving you guys updates on battery life performance and everything like that later on in the week as we move on here with beta 2. But as far as now goes, go ahead, install onto your device, see what's new. You can always downgrade if you don't like the performance or if you have some major issue that you know hinders your daily performance. But in my opinion, still a very good update here and you should all install it if you want to check out all the new features in beta 1 that we saw and then some of the new features and changes that we see here in beta 2. So anyways guys, I'm going to get out of here so you can go ahead and enjoy iOS 13 or maybe check out some other content on iOS 13 as well. If you want to stay up to date with all beta updates with iOS 13, make sure to get subscribed and also hit the bell button to get updates as soon as those videos are released. Again, link in the video description below to a video on how to install iOS 13, the updated version without macOS or uh, Xcode or anything like that. If you want to get more involved with the channel, go ahead, follow me on Twitter. I'll have a QR code on screen that you can go ahead and uh, follow me Twitter reach out to me there I'll you know say hi uh, anything like that and I give channel updates there as well if you want to get even more involved and stay more up to date with all the new features changes maybe uh, you know figure out if your favorite apps are working within iOS 13 or basically any news um, that you may want um, that is not you know in our content you can go ahead and check out the discord server the discord server is super awesome there's like 18 1900 members there and they're all talking about everything that we talk about here on the channel which which is super exciting. And there's a lot of cool people out there that will help you with any of your problems or explain to you what's going on within the iOS 13 betas or iOS 12 betas. So yeah, anyways, guys, thank you again for watching and hopefully I'll be seeing you in some upcoming content. Hope you all have an awesome day. Peace.